Hey, 4xE fans. I am not in a Jeep Wrangler 4xE. I am in a Genesis G80 electric. And if you aren't familiar with the Genesis line of vehicles, which I really had not been until I got this, that's part of the Hyundai uh, mothership, if you will. And uh, the G80 is, uh, well, There's I guess there's a gas version of the G80, but they call this a G80 electric. Fully electric vehicle. Um, I forget how big the battery is. It's like 80, I want to say it's like 87 kilowatt hour or something like that, 87 and a half. And uh, there, there's something really cool about a luxury vehicle. Uh, I'm telling you, I have, um, I could really enjoy this kind of luxury, but it's not exactly like my season, if you will. It's not the kind of vehicle I would normally like to have. It's kind of like Cadillacs. They're cool, but I don't, I feel like there's an age limit. I feel like I have to be a little bit older and a little grayer to be qualified to own and drive one. But I seriously enjoyed this vehicle anyway. And I'm going to tell you the bells and whistles. I mean, these things start like 74, 75,000 and you get the bells and whistles that come along with a vehicle of that caliber in the Genesis G80. It is just, I'm, I'm still discovering stuff. I'm still finding stuff. And I, you know, I, I found a few functions of like, boy, it'd be nice if I, if it did this and I find it, you know, later in the software and everything. So really cool car, but there's something really cool that we can learn uh, about MPGE and that mysterious number that seems to be so misunderstood by so many people. Uh, right now on the dash, this vehicle says it's getting 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's actually a better formula or a better way, a better metric to measure electric vehicles is by miles per kilowatt hour. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to everybody. So that's why the EPA or whoever came up with that MPGE figure to try to give consumers an apples to apples comparison between miles per gallon and miles per gallon equivalent. And MPGE doesn't apply just to electrified vehicles. It, it applies to all alternative fuel vehicles. If you go on Wikipedia and look up MPGE, there's a whole big long article that gives all sorts of formulas of, of converting between different forms of energy and MPGE. But in the, in the case of this particular vehicle, it is sitting at 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Sometimes it'll say four, but it's usually somewhere in that 3.8 to 3.9, depending on if I've kept my foot out of it, and, which by the way, it does have a sport mode, which is oh so fun. I mean, it's not quite uh, the acceleration of a Tesla Model S, but still a lot of fun. And um, it, but so it's usually staying around 3.9, which equates to, you can go online and get a converter that converts straight from miles per kilowatt hour to MPGE. And in this case, this vehicle is rated 131 MPGE. I don't know if it's rated at that, but that's about what I'm getting. I forget. I looked up the rating. I don't remember what it is, but I'm getting about 131.4495 MPGE. So the reason I'm sharing this is so we can understand how abysmal 49 MPGE is in the Wrangler 4xE and how pretty bad the 56 MPGE is in the Grand Cherokee 4xE. It's what you would expect out of a vehicle that is shaped the way it is. It's what you would expect out of a vehicle that's as heavy as it is. One of the downsides to plug-in hybrids is they do get heavy because you've got all the weight of the gas version of that vehicle plus the weight of the hybrid system and the battery and everything. And I think in like the Wrangler 4xE, it's like 800 pounds of extra weight that we're carrying around for that hybrid system, which makes it less efficient. Not that you could make the Jeep Wrangler much more efficient because of its shape and because of the axles. And, you know, it's just a heavy duty vehicle, but it it's why when somebody at Jeep decided to market 49 MPGE, that it was actually kind of humorous to those of us that understand what MPGE is and understand how bad that number is for an electrified vehicle. It, you know, when you're comparing to like Tesla, you know, I think the Model S is rated at 130 some MPGE. Uh, you know, when you compare it to vehicles that actually get decent efficiency, why 49 MPGE is kind of humorous. I think the only vehicle that has a worse MPGE rating is the Hummer EV. 
and it's just because the weight of the darn thing you know it's got 200 kilowatt hour battery i mean it's just a big massive beast of a super truck that just happens to be electric so um i i, I just wanted to share that so we can understand that relationship of miles per kilowatt hour to mpge because i think it's one of those things that just isn't understood well and you can regularly see uh people who are selling you know now that there are a lot of uh four by e's on the market on the used market because of all the lease turn-ins that are happening you, you can go on about any website and find people that are selling them and saying they get 49 miles the gallon and which they don't of course and they think it's a combined hybrid mile uh, you know gas mileage which it's not it's not a gas electric combined when you see combined when you see an MPG rating or an MPGE rating and it says combined, what it's combining is Highway City because that's how the EPA t does their test process now. They have a particular pattern where they go up to a certain speed and then drop. And, it, and it's like an up and down kind of thing to combine a city highway gas mileage. If you're a little bit older, you will remember years ago, vehicles used to always come with a highway gas mileage and a, and a city gas mileage. They would rate those two. And of course, the Monroney sticker doesn't allow room for that on a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So both numbers are combined highway city fuel mileage ratings. The 21 miles per gallon that the plug, the regular 4 by e is rated at is rated when you don't have all that battery uh, range there. And it's just operating as a hybrid. It's a combined city highway gas mileage. Now it does happen to be hybrid gas mileage because it's still a hybrid. The Wrangler 4xE and the Grand Cherokee 4xE don't leave their hybrid system behind and go into a gas only mode. Uh, you know, no matter what any salesperson has told you, like there's never a gas only mode. Well, there is, but it has to be under extreme mo circumstances when it goes into like a limp mode. There is, there is actually a time that it will operate in gas only, but you're not going any faster than 20 mile an hour when it does that. But in all regular circumstances, there's never a time that the 4 by e is not a hybrid and it's always going to use both systems. So it, that, that 21 miles a gallon isn't a gas only. And like, if you push the e-save button, that isn't a gas only mode. It just biases the system towards the gas engine, but it's still hybrid. So, and then the 49 MPGE figure, if you look real close to the formula, there is no gas used in that. That's strictly electric um, efficiency. That's, that's what that rating is. And that's why it's MPGE because it's electric only. Now it's equivalent. That E doesn't stand for electric. It stands for equivalent, but it's only when that vehicle is in electric mode, when you get that MPGE figure, that's why MPGE figures can apply to an electric vehicle like this one and a Tesla Model S. You can look up, you can Google this yourself. You can Google Tesla Model X MPGE or uh, Aptera MPGE, uh, and you'll find some ridiculous numbers on the Aptera. Or if you look up the, uh, what is it, the uh, the Audi, whatever the Audi electric is, you know, you can look up the MPGE rating. Anybody who has an electric vehicle, you can look up its MPGE rating, and you will see that there's no gas involved, but it still has an MPGE rating. But... It, you can convert that using that online calculator that I found. You can convert that into a miles per kilowatt hour rating, just like I took this miles per kilowatt hour rating off this Genesis and converted it to the, converted it to MPGE. Does that make sense? Am I talking too fast? Is this coming across well? So anyway, just wanted to share that and wanted to make a video about something because my Jeep's been in the shop for well over a week. And um, actually it'll be what, two weeks tomorrow that it's been in the shop getting the new door and hoods and tailgate. And I got to tell you, the guys at Dayton Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Dayton, Ohio, well, it's in Trotwood, Ohio, um, they, uh, I think they're doing a bang up job and really making sure it's done right. So I am patiently enjoying this Genesis G80 in the meantime. So, oh, and there's a whole backstory to how I ended up with this thing. Okay. So I wanted to rent a Chevy Bolt. I, I just wanted to have a little fun with this rental, right? I got there. They didn't have a Bolt. They had a Kia. I think it was a Nero EV. And I drove the Kia. I started it up and I was kind of familiarizing myself with all the controls. Couldn't get the air conditioning working. So I drove it around the parking garage. Couldn't get it to, couldn't get the AC to turn on. No matter what I did, the AC would not turn on. Went back in. 
I said, hey, the air conditioning isn't working in that thing. And he goes, well, all we have left is that Genesis. So it looks like you're getting an upgrade. So, you know, sometimes life has some fun things to go along with what you're doing. And uh, I'm kind of enjoying that as, as I can. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Thanks for being patient with me while I don't have a Jeep. Uh, I'll have some upcoming videos. I have a stack of parts. I'm facing my garage. That's where I'm pointing. You can't see that. But I have a stack of parts in here. I, I've got some rock lights from uh, DCS that I'm going to be putting on soon. Been wanting to do those for a long time. I finally ordered the Terracoustic front speakers for my 4xe. So I'll be putting those in. And uh, what else? It seems like there's another project I have, and I can't remember what the uh, the final one is, but there's something else that I bought for. Oh, I've got some um, uh, Rockies off-road um, guards to go over the shocks for when I'm off-roading. I hope to get those on sometime soon. So I've got these stacks of boxes that are piling up and uh, ready to put them on and do some videos coming here soon. So stay tuned. Hopefully I will hear this video is being done on October 2nd on Wednesday, hoping to hear something about my Jeep tomorrow or Friday. Who knows? We'll see you. Take care. Thanks for watching.